You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we're excited to be back for an episode this week. I won't say, uh, or I have to say, I'm sorry, I have to apologize. We missed yeah, our bad. episode last week. It's just... Bad, bad. My husband was on holidays, and the week completely got away from us, and uh, I just could not find a time to cut over to my mom's to record, so... So, yeah, I want I want to point something out, too, right? Like, we're very consistent in doing this podcast, but one of the reasons that we can be very consistent in doing this podcast is we actually spend a lot of time with each other. Yeah. So, Holly is always here at some point so we say okay whatever okay this would be a good time what, to do this yeah or, whatever mean, day works generally as as we, it's before thursday <laughs> generally we leave it to the last minute on wednesday and say okay yeah. we have no other time we have to fit it in but like i know like um the um monday mornings um we had uh, yeah you probably didn't listen to it but i listened to it it was great i really enjoyed it um but it was dan and um kevin oh i miss yeah i'll have to go yeah. back and listen to so that. because because they don't Obviously, uh, Matt and Kevin don't even live in the same country. Right. <laughs> you know, so they have to really, it's really difficult, you know, to narrow p- people down to, you know, get something done like this, especially since, you know, this isn't a job. Right. You know, this is this is what you fit in between doing what you, you have, have to, to do, do. right? Yeah. So, so Holly, if, Holly and I are blessed and lucky that we're in each other's back pockets, so, well, yeah. But when my husband's on holidays, I'm not around a lot. Yeah, when the <laughs> husband's on holidays, I don't see Holly. Yeah. So, that's just the way it goes. So, we apologize. I know I some people, some family members, I'll say family member. I won't say family members. It was one person said, you didn't do a podcast last week. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, sorry. So, I know if. Some ladies were waiting for it, wondering where we went. Just apologies there. Yeah, it just happened. Life happened. Yeah. M- but we are alive and well. We are alive and, and well. I'm back. So, anyway, so for this week, uh, oh, we didn't say. Jesus, Jesus meek and humble, humble of heart, heart, make our hearts like, like unto, unto thine. thine. Yeah. There we go. So, um, yeah, what do we have? Uh, oh, well, I will say news for our family. Yes. My sister had her baby on the July 19th, the Feast of St. Vincent de Paul. Yes. And a uh, beautiful little girl, Anna. Anna. I and love the name. Named after, she named her after Anna the Prophetess. Yes, and I have a special devotion to her. I have a special devotion. Yeah. Because she was a widow. Yeah. So, um, beautiful little baby girl. And uh, my sister, I was blessed. My sister asked me to be godmother. So, that was very nice. And we had her baptized on uh, Sunday. And... I, I said it, uh, did I say it in our one chat, or I just said maybe to people, there's nothing like a baptism on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just so nice. Yeah. You go to Mass, and then you right, have a nice right. baptism after. and It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Just mm-hmm. one of the great graces and the sacraments that we love. So um, And blessings. And I used to, a lot of people, the one thing that I, I get so full of joy, like I'm not even kidding, you know, when I hear that somebody's pregnant, yeah, I'm just like, Oh, you know, joy. joy, the joy just, I don't know, because it's another soul for God. Yeah. Like, and I think in this world, we have a tendency to think, oh my gosh, the world's so bad, the world's so this, the world's so that, you know, but yeah. no, God wanted this soul. Yeah, he wanted exactly. this, you yeah. know, like, it's just a miracle. It's just the most glorious thing. It's just wonderful. You know, like, we shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid, like, because... I mean, and I know, I remember when my kids were like, oh, what are the kids going to, even now, you know, Ava's mm. 14, what are they going to do? Where yeah. are they going to go? How are they going to save their soul in this yeah. corrupt world, right? Mm-hmm. But we just have to say, no, no, God wanted this soul. God wants more souls. souls. God wants all the souls. Right. You know? And, and funny enough, uh, we had the baptism after, we have two masses on Sunday at our church. The 8 o'clock mass is usually very light, like there's not a lot of people at it. But then the 10 o'clock mass is packed. So you, we had this mass and it was packed with people. And then you, we had the baptism after. And so there's there was a lot of people there. And everybody usually goes downstairs and visit. But we're up there doing the baptism. 
And uh, there's this older gentleman at our church and he comes out of the church, finished praying, and he stands there and he's watching the baptism. So it's just like our immediate family, like no, right, right. like it wasn't a lot of people do, watching the baptism. And then this gentleman that goes to our church and I, at the time I was like, oh, that's nice. He's watching or whatever. But he came up to my brother, my brother was the godfather and he came up to my brother and I after in the parking lot and he said, I hope you don't mind that I was there watching the baptism. He he thought my brother was the dad, but <laughs> and he's like, it's just. But he said, there's just something about a baptism, getting to watch the true sacrament, yeah, being done, yeah, because you don't get that. You don't get that in the novice order. You don't get that, and you All know. Right. He goes, so anytime there's a baptism, if I see a baptism, I want to just participate and watch. And it was very beautiful. Like what he yeah. said was very beautiful and very true, and it was so true. That yeah. even though, you know, I thought that was very nice. That even though he didn't know, uh, he doesn't really know our family very well. And, um, like, we know him. Well, we've known him for a long church, time. We've known him for a long time. But we're not time. close, I would right, say. Right, no. And, uh, but it was just so nice that he was like, I just want to partake in the sacrament. Yeah. I want to be there and watch that. And I, I well, I gonna you know, I wasn't, I had something floating around in my head. And I wasn't sure I was going to talk about it. Oh, okay. But I think you've just kind of. segued in there. You've opened the door, door for me to talk about it. Because. As of late, I've been spending a lot of time on the internet uh, wa- watching and listening to a lot of uh, Catholic podcasters, and they're not traditional. They're, um, well, a guaranteed 100% all these people go to a, a traditional mass somewhere, but they're part of the novice order, right? right? I generally put it down to FSSP, mm-hmm. but like I think there's other things that they can go to and they belong to, right? Because they're very, very dedicated to belonging to the novice order right and they constantly will say things like well you know that not that the they had other mass is not valid right but when I listen to them and I listen to them because I'm just seeing what's out there and what people are thinking and doing they don't have the true sacraments right and father gave a sermon on um Sunday and it was all about the you know the the pope and the lineage and, and all that stuff which i i'm not partial to those sermons because i i mean i already know all that i don't mean to be rude yeah <laughs> but, you know i already know all that and of course we have so many new people that i'm they just like they that. need to hear it i don't need to hear it i just i always want to hear about how do i make myself better right, right? but this was actually a really good sermon mm-hmm it was really good. You know, and he went on about how, uh, you know, the true sacraments were passed down. And he talked about um, Archbishop Thuk. And he talked about, you know, it was really, really beautiful. And I was and I was thinking in my head about all these, um, you know, all these novice order people. Like, where were, where were you people mm-hmm. 60 years ago? Yeah. Where were you people 50 years ago? Mm-hmm. You know, when all these and the one the one comment I made, I made a comment in one of the videos um, I because they were bashing. They, they're always bashing the Pius X and they're always well, they don't even actually they bash the Pius X, but they don't even give SETI's. They're just too airtime. They don't even give them the, the, the thought in their head. Like right. they're just not even worth talking about. Right. right. But I, I was like, I said, no, you don't understand. You weren't there. Mm-hmm. Right. And I said, and it's actually a miraculous thing. It's very miraculous because it was very worldwide. Right. It wasn't just, you know, this was happening in Kansas City that this one weird person decided that wasn't the Pope. Right. Like this was a universal thing. This was, and I may have said this before, but, you know, people all over the world were, were like, ah, ah, I don't know what's going on here, but this, this is, is not Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. You know, that Jan Bollinger, may she rest yeah. in peace. That's what she said to me. Yeah. She said, she walked in, she walked out of that church and she turned to her husband and she said, I don't know what's going on in there, but that's not Catholic and I'm not going back until I find out. Right. And, you know, and that was happening all over the world. And that's, you know, that's why Dan is doing that in def- Indefectible. Indefectibles, yeah. you know, like it's because that that was really a miraculous thing that my father did it and the Picards did it. And this, you know, Father Norman Dean was going across Canada to these pockets of people everywhere. And you can find them around the world. Right. And it's not like 
people had a cell phone and they called up, you yeah, know. no. You know. They Jan had to Bull, go, literally go Jan searching. Bollinger called up, you know, Paul Picard and said, did you see what was going on? Yeah. You know, like they don't even know each other. Yeah. I mean, they probably do now, yeah. but, yeah. you know. But you know what I mean? Like, and it was so, it was such a miraculous thing. And then these people now, they're, they're on there and there's, they're just, they're miss they are really missing something. Mm -hmm. Like when I listen to them and, you know, they sound like, you know, they know, what, but they really, truly are missing. I, I, and I can't even put my finger really on it, what they're missing when I listen to them. But I mean, they, they do some comedy shows. I find them very crass. Well, they don't, they don't, they, if you don't have, this is just my opinion. If you don't have the true sacraments and you don't have, you're missing the graces. Yes. You're going to miss the graces. And this gentleman that came up to my brother and I after mass, he actually said it very perfectly. He said, you have to think of it as, um, God gave us a formula. Yeah. Like you think of a chemist, they have a formula. If they mess with that formula in any way. Yeah. The outcome is going to be completely different. Right. And he said what the novice order has done is they messed with the formula. They yes. changed the words. The words are the formula. Right. And they changed the words. He goes, so when they're doing the baptism and they're, they've completely changed the words of baptism. Right. He said, they don't have the formula. They don't yeah. have it. Yeah. And I thought, you, and I thought when he said that, I thought, you know what? That's the perfect way of saying it. Yes. They've messed with the formula. And, and you have to remember, and I've said this for a long time. The, to me, the word science and religion is almost interchangeable. Like when we say the science of the saints, mm -hmm. right? You know, the formula, the science, the, it is a science. The religion is a science. It's more of a science than science is a science. Mm-hmm. You know, like A plus B equals C. The, you know, the only thing that changes the science, like, like even when we were talking about, um, you know, um, divine providence and that the world actually revolves around sin, mm -hmm. right? The only thing that changes the science is God's miracles. Right. When God decides to go outside of the science, I guess. Mm -hmm. When he, when he disperses his graces. Right. For who knows what reason. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like, and it's usually, and well, I mean, we do know, we do know, you know, sort of, but we don't, you know, people get graces all the time. Yeah. For reasons we're not privy to. Right. Right. But and that, that's... but that, but other than that, it is a science. Like if you're going to steal something, a retribution has to be paid. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're going to do, if you're going to give God love. Or you're going to say a prayer, graces mm -hmm. are given. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it is a science. Yeah. The science. It's there's a reason we call it the science of the saints. But anyway. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> I just I, I just happened that you talking about this baptism and our friend there talking about that. Yeah. It made me able to because I have been a little bit of like, oh, why am I listening to these people? Why you know, know why you listen to them. I don't know either. <laughs> Like, I would just, I, I, I don't get it, because I'm just like, well, you know, it's even like, if you think of, I do I dare even say this topic, but I remember I stumbled upon a video once of the Feniism. Yeah, Feniism. And I was like, and I'm listening to, and, and, and again, I'm like, why am I watching this? I don't believe anything you're saying, and you just sound stupid to me. Yes. Like, everything they were saying, I was like, and then I was like, gonna comment and i was like no i don't care i like i don't care i'm not even gonna comment to you because everything you're saying is just ridiculous yeah so i'm out of here and right. i just shut it off and that's know? what we really should do we should we really should just shut it because it okay and go more for god's grace go more for god's grace because i am going to tell you and i believe we've said this in the podcast before they those people are so concrete in their yeah Errors in and their, their errors. beliefs. Yeah, your comment is going to mean diddly squat, squat to yeah, them. Yeah, you know, it's not going to mean anything to them. And 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 we've said it before on this podcast, and I firmly believe it. The way that you change somebody is through your actions, and not your, your prayer, words, your, your prayer sacrifice. and sacrifice, and your actions. Yeah, word and and I'm going to say especially on the internet. Yeah, comments in particular. In most cases, yeah, 
mean very little right to people very little um because it's just a they're looking at a screen they're not even looking at a real person right yes so they can sit there and they can go yeah you don't know what you're talking about and just scroll up yeah you know okay so now you've segued into the next oh your next topic okay (laughs) oh look at me i'm just reading your mind (laughs) you are reading my mind here uh lisa davis hello lisa how are you she uh, <laughs> that's weird. She posted on her um her Facebook page today or um it was like a quiz and it or not a quiz but a, a little how how is it you communicate with people? A oh. was face to face. B was, was this a quiz you could take? No, no, she just, you know, just it was a meme thing, right? Oh, me, okay. So you just look so, at it. Okay. Yeah, you just look at it and then you if you felt like commenting, you comment you below. Okay. Right? So so um Face to face, um, on the phone. Right. B was on the phone. C was texting. Right. And D was social media. Right. Right. So I much prefer face to face. Yeah. Well, I commented and I said, you know, most people commented where the very obvious one is most people communicate through texting. I hate texting. Yeah, I know. But well, anyway, so I commented and I, I do majority of my stuff face to face. Yeah. On the phone, if I really have something to say. Yeah. And early in the morning and late at night, social media. Right. Because I don't have a cell phone. Right. Right. And Lisa asked me, she said, why? She said, how do you have you never had a cell phone? Because I mean, I am a a weirdo by not having a cell phone. Right. She said, have you never had a cell phone? Is this something you gave up? You know, why don't you have a cell phone? So I was just going to answer and i was thinking about this because i just saw this right before i came on here yeah i was thinking about it and i was thought i'll just answer lisa's question on the podcast and hope she listens to it yeah (laughs) (laughs) i the reason i don't have a cell phone is i i am like the rest of the world i used to have a cell phone but i had a lot of money financial problems right um, for quite a few years, I was really struggling financially yeah. and I was trying to maintain a business and I was trying to do stuff. And when you're running a business, you always need a landline, mm-hmm. but I didn't need a cell so, phone. So I always ended up to get rid of expenses, getting rid of the cell phone. Well, that's the first thing to go. Cause it's not a necessity. It's not a necessity. So it's the first thing to go. So I, so I've str- I'm not I don't struggle financially anymore. I could very easily go get myself a cell phone and pay for it now. But I have made the decision now to not do that cuz you're just accustomed to this way of life. Well, I am accustomed. I t- well, the one thing I do notice like I'm like everybody else. I'm very I have an addictive personality. Mm-hmm. If the cell phone is sitting beside me, I will look at it 300 times. Yeah. And the one thing that I did notice was um especially when we were doing homeschooling and i i tried to to say what do you mean when we were doing homeschooling well we remember doing homeschooling in the house there was a few of us alexandra and Kate. oh oh yeah yeah sorry right and i was just like kids or something you're setting your kid kids up this is what i noticed the most i call i call i start to call the cell phone the black hole yeah which it is which it is and i said you're setting your kids up to can't wait for the day they get to dive into, into the black the hole. hole. Yeah. Right? Because as little children, all they're seeing is that you're always on that phone. Right? right? And it's not that you're always on the phone. Like maybe you're stirring the soup and then you pick up the phone and you, oh, you know, I don't know. You look, maybe you got a message. Maybe somebody yeah. messaged you. Maybe you're looking at your bank. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're, you're looking at TikTok. Maybe you're reading a recipe maybe, while you're maybe, cooking. That's maybe right. you're looking at good stuff. You know, it, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be bad stuff. Yeah. But it's constantly taking you away from, from the moment. moment, right? You know, and and I and when I was watching the moms with the kids, I noticed that the kids were in a fight for the mom's attention. attention. Okay, yeah. right? The kids were in a fight, like, and not only that, like, and you'll notice. Well, you know, with your kids, because you have a cell phone, you pick up your phone and you'll see something funny. Go, ha ha, that's funny. And they want to see what you're. And right away, at. they're right over there. Where? Yeah. What's on? What's, what's in the? Back, what's so funny? What's in the black hole? What's yeah. so funny? What's in the black hole? You well, know, they and they're right there. What's in the black hole? No, I that, say that. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and so, and so that's what the kids are doing. So you're, like, who here wants their kids to be on a cell phone? Like, yeah. you know, you said yourself you know like you know enough 
I mean, especially boys. You yeah. got you got ten year old boy. You got a ten year old, nine year old. Do you think I want him on a cell? You phone? You want him to be near no a cell phone? Way right, and it, it's like because, and you know that it's going to come up. Yeah, you know what's going. You know how many times you're on the phone or you're on mm-hmm. YouTube or wherever the heck you are. Something inappropriate flashes before your eyes. Yeah, and you have the strength. Well, and even you know my daughter. She's, aside. she's fourteen, and she gets asked all the time why she doesn't have a cell phone. Yeah. Constantly. Right. By family members who aren't Catholic or, you know, like, I think for the most part, Catholics get it. I don't know. Other Catholic kids. I, they I don't know. know. They don't any. go, why would you, you know, but, uh, but from other outside sources, she has been asked, why don't you have a cell phone? My brother has a cell phone. This person has a cell phone. Why don't you have a cell phone? And she just is like, uh, you know. She well, she wants one. And she wants one. because yeah. She's waiting. She's waiting. She's chomping at the bit. bit for the day. I mean, she doesn't she... say that. No, but you can, you know she is. You know she is that she can get and go into the black hole oh, herself. Self. Yeah. You so... know, and I mean, we talk a lot, ladies, about breaking the world and its vanities. Mm-hmm. And we talk a lot about, you know, separating ourselves from the world. Yeah. That cell phone, you might as well call it like a giant cancerous tumor attached yeah. to your hip. hip. Or wherever you keep it. <laughs> because that's how attached we are to it, right? And I just, well, I mean, because because I was fortunate enough and blessed to be suffering through financial problems. <laughs> I would, you know, I was, I didn't have a choice. It was you. taken away from me, right? And then when I said, you know, well, you can go get a cell phone, and I'm like, no, no. I got I mean, rid of that cancer. Why do I want to bring it back? And I have, I have, uh, I have multiple things. I have a computer. I have an iPad that yeah. used to be our cash register at our store. <laughs> store yeah. And I have a cell. I do have a cell phone, but it's only hooked up to Wi-Fi, and I keep them. And what I deliber and I did this deliberately because we have Wi Fi in the house. Yeah. So I can go on it. Even though I don't can't text, I can look at a cell phone anytime I want and scroll through the endless memes that mm-hmm. and I I mean, you have to be a mighty controlled person to not meme yourself to death. Right. Or or the or to um it's not the memes. What are those things the like reels. The, the reels, yeah. right? When the real Short little videos or YouTube shorts, reels, YouTube shorts, tomato, yeah. tomato, they're the same thing. You know, and you're just, next thing you know, you've wasted a half an hour, you've wasted an hour. Mm-hmm. and Watching you, reels. You know, even if it's only 15 minutes, I don't know yeah. what everybody's habits are. I know what mine were, and they, they were pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. Like, I could waste an hour blink, without blinking an eyeball. Oh, yeah. You oh, know. Yeah. Even, um, you know, I wanted to say this because... Um, I, I I really when Father gives a sermon, um, you know I feel that you know he's the shepherd, we're his flock, mm-hmm. and we should take everything he says very seriously from that pulpit, and not only listen but put it into practice. Yes, when he gives you these this guidance, especially from the pulpit, yeah, you need to take that very seriously and put it into practice. So I I try myself to take what he says and do that. So a few weeks ago he gave a sermon and he said something, and I thought, yeah, you know that's so true about. Um, throughout the day or whatever, I can't remember his exact words, but you know, too much of your time is being occupied by things that are not important. Right. And he talked about, um, you know, the apostle, like St. Paul. Yeah. He did all this traveling. Remember that? Yes. He did all this traveling. How much of that time was spent walking alone? Yeah. What do you think he was doing when he was walking alone for hours and days on end? Right. That's a lot of reflective thought, you know? Yes, a lot of prayer. So the other day we had to go and we had to get the kids some um, passports. And I don't know how it is in the States, but when you got to go to a passport office in Canada, you better clear your whole day. Yeah. You know, because you'll be sitting there for hours, right? Yeah. So we were sitting there and I thought, I'm sitting here. And normally I would pull out my phone. Yes. And I would scroll on the phone or whatever. Yeah. I, th- I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to take, I'm going to sit here uh-huh. and I'm going to take this time and I'm going to say the rosary. And then when the rosary's done, I'm going to sit there and quiet 
reflective thought and I am not going to pull out my phone. Right, right. So I put that phone in my purse and I zipped up the zipper. Mm-hmm. And it was and it was weird because both both my kids were with me and my husband. I wasn't alone. Right. But you know, you're sitting there in an office full of people. You're going to sit there and talk and no. you know. So we sat there and it was funny. Me, I sat there and I prayed the rosary and I felt the difference that that had. Oh, really? In the room. Oh. With my kids and my husband. You know, he, my husband, normally, like, you get very impatient, right? And he, your You're husband like, is oh, very, come on, he gets, this is taking he forever. Gets, he gets very Yeah, like agitated antsy. and antsy, right? He wasn't antsy. He wasn't agitated. The kids weren't antsy. They weren't agitated. I was sitting there quietly praying the rosary, and no one knew I was doing it. Right. But they were kind of, they, and what's funny, went miraculously, they left me alone. Oh, really? They weren't bugging me. They weren't talking to, and I don't, I don't want to use the word bugging me, but you know, my husband and my daughter were having a nice conversation. Uh-huh. They were talking to each other. Even my husband wasn't on his phone. Oh, really? Yeah. And I thought to myself, I thought, is this because I'm praying the rosary? Yeah. And, and I know it. I know it was. Yeah. Well, well I've and never. And we sat there for almost two hours. Right, right. And it was very pleasant. I, I noticed that, um, well, I, I have noticed like when things, you know, people say when, when, when you're in your house and things start to get out of control, like, and I've had that a few times here, like, well, and I'm not dealing with little children. I'm dealing with adults, right? Yeah. So when I'm just like, this is getting, this is getting a little nutty in here. Mm-hmm. I just say, I think it's time to pray the rosary. Yeah. Let's you know, bring her back down. Let's bring her back in. Let's. Let's, you know, have a little calmness. Let's have a little calmness. Let's bring everybody back. Like, I mean, if you, if you use that in your home, ladies, if you, if things start to spiral, as soon as they're start, they're spiraling, stop and say, okay, time to pray the rosary. Well, and the thing is, is I'm guilty of that. I was very guilty of that. You know, there's chaos going on around me. The kids are screaming at each other. They're fighting. They're bickering. My husband's upset and I'm sitting there on my phone. Do, do, scrolling through reels. Yeah. And all this chaos is going around me. And, and where and am I? I'm in the black hole. And you're you're adding to the chaos. And I'm adding to the chaos because they're doing yeah. all this. And you know what I'm not doing? I'm not being a mother. Yeah. yeah. I'm annoyed because I can't sit here and watch a reel. Yes. And all this chaos is going on. And the kids are bickering. And I'm annoyed that they're bothering me when I'm trying to watch a reel. Yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. That is so messed up. And I'm using myself as an example because I was so, <laughs> and I still am some days, so guilty of that. Yeah. But when Father gave that sermon, I'm like, yes. I'm like, oh my word, how much time do I spend mm-hmm. frivolously frittering away the day on nonsense when I could be, spend that time in either quiet spiritual reading. And and that's the other thing, you know, when Father said, you know, the spiritual reading is a must. Yes. You must do the spiritual reading. And I thought, you know what, Holly, I don't want to hear that you don't have time for spiritual reading when you pull out your phone. I'm talking to myself. Here. Yeah. You pulled out your phone and you were on your phone for how many hours yesterday? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Baloney, you don't have time for spiritual reading. I got really hard with myself and I had to stop and say, you don't tell yourself that you don't have time for spiritual reading because that's baloney. Yeah, right. It's baloney. We have to get the chaos out of the life, ladies. The black hole is bringing it into the life. Well, and I would tell you one of the things that I did was, you know, my morning routine was I... I'd always get up and, you know, start my day by saying good morning to Jesus and saying my morning prayers. But then, you know, I'd make myself a tea and I'd sit down on my phone and check my emails and not not anything bad. Yeah. You know, I'd check my emails. And then I thought, you know, no, that is not going to be the first thing I do. Yeah. Because what I'm saying when you do that, what you're saying is this is the most important thing in my day. Right. So rather than that, I get up, say my morning prayers, make myself a tea and I grab a book and it's summer now, so I grab a book yeah. and I go out on the porch and I read at least one chapter of a book. Uh-huh. Then I've started my day with spiritual reading. Right. With a contemplative thought. Now, mind you, ladies, I know, like, my kids are older. Yeah, you don't have little I don't children. have to get up and get, like, my kids get their own breakfast, yeah. you know. So I, I get that that's not for everybody. But what I'm saying is if you're at that point in your life mm-hmm. and you can do that, yeah, do it. Because it's made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. I know the days where I get up harried and, like, you know, oh, we're late, we're in a rush, and I don't do that spiritual reading. 
it sets the tone for the whole day. Right, right. You know, yeah. it does set a tone for your day. Well, I mean, I know it's difficult to do, but I mean, that's why I, all my internet access is upstairs in, in the bedroom. Away. Is away, right? Yeah. I don't keep a phone near me. I don't keep an iPad near me. I don't keep a computer near me. I mean, if I'm on in the middle of the day, it's because I went upstairs. I mean, and I am, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody else. Oh, I wonder if anybody did something good. You know, and, yeah. I, uh, and I still take five, ten minutes just to walk because I walk by the computer room yeah. to look. But generally speaking, mm -hmm. f my whole bulk of the day is not spent near a social media, like a, yeah. me a media device of any sort. So... So, I mean, and you know what, it, it's hard because there is, there can be good on the internet, but when you really sit down and you really think about it, that the, the black hole, the internet, the, your phone or whatever, that is not reality. No, it's not. And what you're doing is you're pulling yourself out of the real world. Yes. And you're diving into this fake world. Uh-huh. And, and you're not living. You know, they say it, live in the moment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, those silly I, I saw, goofy sayings. Oh, speaking of that, I just saw I just saw Candace Owens one, a country singer, Jason Aldean. No, no, a woman. It was just a short. Oh. I saw it this morning. See, I, I See, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not perfect. perfect. Everybody, <laughs> I, just, I look in the morning. I look in the evening, and I saw her. Um, she stopped her show. Oh yes, that's all over the internet. Is I it? saw you. I mean. If, she, Some Catholics might not see it because you may have your feet so tailored. But, uh, yeah, there was a country singer who stopped her show because women were taking, well, they were in VIP seats. And they were just taking They were self. taking selfies and they interrupted her show. She stopped her show and told them to sit down and stop taking pictures. And she used a really bad word. And uh, so now she, her whole, pretty much her whole fan base has turned on her. Oh, really? Yeah, for doing that. Yeah. So, but I mean, it, but. I didn't see that. Candace Owens was giving her a thumbs up. No, I know all the right wing ones are, but, but it is the prime example of, you know, here you are, you're at this concert and you paid all this money to see this woman sing and you're just taking selfies of yourself. Yeah. You know, so it, it it's everywhere and it's, we need to detach ourselves. From the world. From, from the world. That's what our book, that's what, that's what our book tells us. The world and its pleasures. And I mean, and we can. the cell phone and the internet is a pleasure. I mean, I'm 60 years old, 61. I live the majority of my life without having contact. You know, like. I my know husband she's very got hard up. to get a hold of sometimes, people. <laughs> <laughs> my husband got up in the day and went to work and I didn't see him again till he came mm -hmm. home. Right. Yeah. And I'm not actually even terribly a fan of this. And I know everybody does it. I know all you guys, the, the husbands and wives texting, texting all, day all day long, long. back and forth. I, a, I think, uh, things are not said properly through a text. Well, that's why when you said Lisa Davis had this quiz and you said, I hate texting. Mm -hmm. I hate texting. If I ever text you, yeah. I I've been told that I'm very annoying with the emojis and the exclamation marks. Yeah. Well, because uh, I want you to know I'm not annoyed. Yeah, yeah. I I'm so worried that my texts are going to be misconstrued, that I'm yeah. upset. Or yeah. I would much rather have a conversation with someone right to their face. Right. I don't like it. I don't like the texting. I don't like the... I just don't like, and also, you know, I think the thing about the texting is, um, it allows for too much talking, too much talking. You don't way, need way to too talk much talk. to somebody that much. No, I don't think you do either. And you I, and I think it, and, and the more you talk, the more hard feelings are <laughs> developed. Yeah. You'll find, you know, like if, yeah. if a little less was said, there wouldn't be so many hard feelings. Like I think texting is great for, uh, okay, my husband texts me. Oh, do you, have, do you have any milk at home? Do you want me to stop and get some at the grocery store? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Goodbye. Or, you know, like or I mean, the biggest thing is I'm late. I'm lost. Or, or you know, or, or I need pertinent information from you. You, yeah. And I'm out and about in a car, like I mean, but I live. I'm just like I'm like in my head. I'm like, hey, 
I live 50 years without this. Yes, and I'm just fine. And I and we managed we fine. I don't know how we managed fine. I don't know how we got... I don't know how I drove to London fine without a... Well, you know, like, I don't know how we did it, you, but we did it. I don't know. You know, even the, something as simple as, oh, is there milk at home? Well, you know... Is that the end of the world if there's not milk? Yeah. And you and then, okay, I'll get it tomorrow morning. I didn't know. Like, cause you, like when we were kids, I mean, short of, I guess, dad calling before he left work, but he would never do that. Well, I'm, no, he would never do that. And my, and you're, and you, we survived just fine. Not your knowing. grandfather. He, he drove a transport and he was, he I never mean, had a cell phone. Well, he? no, he did. And he threw it out on the highway. Oh, right. But <laughs> he went driving down the road. He threw it out on the highway. So that was him. And that was his thing with the cell phone. But, he he also had he drove with another driver and this guy he drove with had to constantly call his wife. He drove with somebody? Yeah, I don't know. I can't Why? remember what it was. It was I don't know what they were well, doing. Well, not but important, but anyways. It's not important. But he was just like, you know, he, he's like in there on oh, his wife, his wife, boo 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 boo. You know, he used to make fun of this guy. Like, what is what is the matter with you? Like, you yeah. can't do your job. You have to call your wife every yeah. five minutes. Like, he thought it was ridiculous. Yeah, that would have been way, like, yeah, because you got to think this is, I'm going to say this is probably when the cell phone was first. Yes, yeah. Out, and a big thing and people started getting them. So he was probably just like, what is going on here? Yeah, he was, he was a man way ahead of his time always. Yeah. You know, but anyway, but, and now, so, I mean, we just lit, we just lit, we took a highway and we took a road map. I don't know. You know, if, I don't know, like things happened and you Well, just... everybody had an, you know, <laughs> grandpa always had a, a road map in his car. Yeah. An atlas or something, yeah. you know. Well, actually my, my grandpa, grandfather and my uncle were always, there was always an atlas on the kitchen table. Yes, they left And they maps. were just always looking at maps. Yes, so they uh... probably knew where they were going before they even left, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gone are the day. Where do you even find an atlas anymore? No, I know. I know. But anyway, ladies, if we want to detach ourselves from the wor world, we have to figure out how to d d detach ourselves from the cell phone. Well, and I'm going to say, too, it's a matter of um, with the cell phone. It's not like, oh, this is an evil. I got to throw it out and get rid of it. If mm -hmm. you have to do that, fine. But it is a matter of resigning your will. Yeah. To God's will, because if you are able to have a cell phone and control yourself and, you know, you can have these things, you are resigning yourself to God's will. That's a great strength mm -hmm. to be able to have these devices because there there is good that can come from them. So if you can use them for, you know, the way they, yeah. the good intent. Yeah, I, I do and you know. you can resign yourself to God's will and, and put the selfishness away. That's what you have to do. I do know an older couple who has a cell phone, but they never turned it on. Like they, yeah. they use it just solely for right. like they're traveling. It's there. Right. If they and need something, they will use it. But yeah. you, you're never going to be able to call them. No. Right. Yeah. Or get a hold of them. And mm -hmm. um, a little bit more, a more distance, I think, is it would be helpful to people. Like not to be so instant and so on top of everything. Well, because that's the real, that's the monster part of the cell phone that has been created. Yeah. It's also the constant need to get a hold of people instantly. Yes. And if they don't reply instantly, people get angry. Well, all of a sudden they're dead in a ditch somewhere. No, I don't even think it's that. Well, I think it's just, it I need, me. I need, well, yeah, no, but it's, it's the, if you don't respond right away, it's like, now I'm waiting on you. Yeah. Or now, like, it's, it's created or this thinking urgency. that something, you know, what has happened that they're not answering the phone. And, right. Like this you know. urgency, this, you know, that, mm -hmm. that people are able to always respond back to you right away. Right. It's not good. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it is what it is, I guess, but. We just have to, especially as mothers, take it back to that, you know, point that, you know, your kids are watching you. Yes. And you if know? they say, if they think that, if they watch they, you behave, that that's the most important thing in your life. What do you think they're going to pick up? Well, you know, what are you saying? And how, you know, you know, they're just waiting for their day. Yeah. You know, that's all. Yeah. All right. So anyway, well, shall we get at our book? We should get at our book. Yeah. We're at the we're at the end of the we're world. We're at the end of this chapter. I'd like to finish this chapter at this episode. Right, the world and its pleasures. Okay, so you said down here, right? The marking. Yeah. Okay, so we're um chapter eleven, the world and its pleasures, um from the mission and duties of young women. Quote: 
curiosity so natural to woman finds an finds a yeah what's that I looked at that word ailment uh, alignment Al- Element, or something. element. It means it means food. Food. Okay. It's food. So so natural to women finds an ailment in those frivolous conversations in which the actions and intentions of our neighbor are scrutinized with incredible levity, and in which she who know shows most rashness in her suspicions and most severity in her judgments is voted in the right. End quote. Okay. So that in a nutshell. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we stumbled over the one word, well, but it may, it's basically is in a, in a one uh, sentence to sum all that up is curiosity is food for gossip. Yes. Okay. Right. So, and, and women fall very much prey to gossip, to gossip, to gossip yeah. right? What did it say? The levity and, yeah. you know, and so we always, so because we're, oh, what are they? Oh, did you see what they're doing over there? No, what are they doing over there? You know, like, and, and even, so, ladies, we got to guard our curiosity. Let's let's uh, read on to find more. Quote, vanity is fostered in those assemblies where no attention is paid to the solid qualities of the mind and heart, but where the only mean of distinction is to display a superior extravagance in objects of luxury and a more marked affectionate and hauteur of manner. End okay. quote. Right. Hot okay. Tea. So now we had curiosity. Actually, this is this whole end is like a little list of problems women have mm-hmm. that take them into the world. Right. Right. Curiosity. Number two here we have vanity. Vanity. Yeah. Right. So it's vanity, and it. Um, when I was going back with this, I was think what I was thinking about was um, brand names. Right? right. You know, like your Louis Vuittons and right. your Coco Chanel's and your you know, I don't know, Reeboks. I don't I even mean, know what know, people do Adidas, anymore, right? Know. But like, you know, like we have to have this and we have to have that and I yeah. have to have, and, and and it's not just that we own it because we enjoy it. It's like we have to have it so that people see that we have it. It's like you turn yourself into a walking billboard. Yeah, you know, like, uh, um, you know, you have to, it's your prestige. It's your, yeah. look at me with my coach bag or look yeah. at me with my this or look at, I have, you know, I only wear, I don't even know because I, I mean, I was, when you guys were little, I was very against brands. Yeah. We never had brands growing up. I, I wouldn't allow, I my said, no, we're not, it. we're not selling Disney and we're not yeah. selling, you know, whatever. I think a lot, a lot of it was the sports clothing. Yeah. Like a you did have a lot of that. What was that? Umbro. Well, umbro for soccer, but. The umbro clothing. You know, but um, I was very much against it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this goes on into the chapter that um, a little bit farther down, that these things that we are against can also be areas of pride for us. Right. Here, continue on. Okay, quote, idleness is strengthened. Oh, sorry, no, I skipped I skipped the paragraph, sorry. Oh, I no, I wanted to talk about something. Oh, okay. Before you go on to this, okay, because, again, um, Lisa, <laughs> this is the Lisa Davis podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> she posted a picture of a piece of jewelry. Yeah. And um, it was Catholic in nature. It was very Catholic. It was a, it was a rosary around the, br- the a bracelet, and then it had a... Um, a chain going down to a ring. ring on your finger and then it had a giant crucifix so that the crucifix would have sat on the front of your hand and then okay. this ring so it was the rosary this the crucifix would sit on the back of your hand to sit on the back of your hand and then tied with a ring around your finger right so um everybody was looking at it because clearly it's very catholic Right, yeah. we have a rosary here around our arm. We have a crucifix. There was nothing about this piece of jewelry that was not Catholic. that was not Catholic. But people were like, "I like that, but I don't like that. Like Why do I like that, but, but I, I don't, don't like, like that. that? Like, how is it? You know?" And when I was thinking about about, I mean, when I looked at it, and I, I thought I felt the same way. I I liked it. I mean, I, what it's not to like? It's rosary and a crucifix. Yeah. But there was something vain about it well to me like there was some i i referred to it as goth yeah like i was just gonna say i haven't seen this picture you're talking about but to me it seems very like almost like you know how um i don't know what 
what ethnicity it is, but you know how they wear all the, is it Hindu? When they're getting married and they have all the, they have, they wrap their hands in all this jewelry and the henna and the, you know, I I don't know what. I think it's a Hindu, it's Indian. It it doesn't seem very Catholic to me. It it seems very like a foreign thing. It's, um, and I also kind of, it also made me think of the pop singer Madonna. Yes, with the eye. Oh, I guess. What you know, have, yeah, right. With so, all her jewelry so and... she wears a lot of crucifixes and she wears yes, a lot of stuff, but it's very garish and it's yeah. very like. I mean, if we if we look at this piece as we look towards the virtues, which are like simplicity and reserve yeah. and modesty. Yeah, like it. I mean, sure. I mean, there's not. I mean, I'm not gonna say there's, there's nothing wrong. Like, I'm it's not gonna not say there's anything, anything wrong, wrong with it. it. There was nothing wrong with it, but I mean, as Catholics, we want, I think we want to be a little, like it's, are we tripping down, more simplistic. are we tripping down a vanity lane here? Right. Are we trying, and I remember once brother said to me, cause this is just reminding me of this. Um, I try, <laughs> I was making this, um, it was a, a piece for all saints. Is this right? about the skull? Yes. <laughs> right. And I was trying, what was I trying? Oh, I was trying to put the crows, crows in, in it. it. Yeah, and and I had I made this cross and I had put in it. Oh, that's oh, out what, of the depths. Out I, of the depths. I put on. I had vinyl out of the depths on it, and I had this skull, and it was for All Saints, you know, and this kind of thing. And I wanted to put my crows on it, and I said, "What do you think? Do you think I can do that, brother?" I said, "Do you think I can put these crows in here?" Yeah. And he said to me, "Hmm, seems like you're trying to fit the world yeah, into religion." <laughs> Well, I, I mean, because they're the right at this time, the world's all celebrating Halloween, right? right? You know, and I'm just like, yeah, I think maybe you're right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm trying to fit the world into religion. Well, right? and I feel like that's what that jewelry, jewelry is, is doing. Well, I'll tell you, I bought this like I, I get very like, um, you know, you see all the pretty jewelry, like, and it's a rosary, and you can wear it sideways and as a necklace, and the cross is sideways. Yeah. And I had bought this little petite rosary. I actually just found it. I happened to come across it when I was shopping at a store we have called Winners. And it was a petite, it's a rosary, but it's a petite, very delicate, beautiful yeah. like, piece. Yeah. So that you could say, you know, I'm wearing a rosary, but I'm also pretty. Yeah. You know? And I so I bought it because I saw it. I was like, oh, that's really nice. I love it. I bought it. I wore it twice, I think. And I don't wear it because I... Afterwards, I thought, this is very vain. Yeah. Like, I want to wear a rosary, but I want to be pretty while I'm yeah. doing it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to wear this anymore because I just don't like that. I don't like the reasoning why behind, and this is just my own personal thing, but I don't like the reasoning behind why I bought that. Right. And it was like, yeah, I'm trying to fit the world into into my apparel and being Catholic, but, but give it that edge, the world, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yes. I don't wear it anymore. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, that's personally what I think too. I think brother was right when he said, "Mandy, don't put the crows on there. You're trying yeah. to fit the, re, you know, you're trying to fit the world into religion." Yeah, you know, does, of God, not of God. Way. Don't fit the, you know. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. So on. quote, quote, is gratified in those parties where a woman destitute of mental charms displays to the eye of the curious her physical form, decked out in the most seducing attire where her merit is estimated by the cost of her dress or the lightness of her manners, end quote. All right, okay, uh, co- co- queer, what is that? Co- que- That's quittery? flirting. Flirting, yeah. Okay, so so we got curiosity, we got vanity, and now we have flirting, Yeah. okay? Um, when I was reading this, and I've, I've thought about, I've, I think about this all the time. I don't know if any of you ladies have ever seen the show Gone with the Wind. Right, I know it's old, and I mean anybody of an age has seen Gone with the Wind. Yeah. So maybe younger people haven't seen Gone with the Wind. Yeah. I don't know that I would recommend. I mean, as opposed to what else is out there, it's whatever, you yeah. know. But as opposed to good Catholic stuff, it's yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> there's two characters in the movie Gone with the Wind. One is Scarlett yeah. O'Hara, and the other Melanie. Is Melanie, yeah. right? And they have the same love interest. Okay, so when I think when I when I read this paragraph, what jumped into my head was Scarlett O'Hara, mm-hmm. her big dress, and all the boys are around that. her, and she's like got her fan, and she's fan, and she's just so fake, and she's so phony, yeah. and she's just so 
ridiculously over the top, but all the men want her, right? Except for the one man she wants. Oh, he wants her too, but he recognized Melanie was the, oh, did he? the sweets. Yeah, oh no, he, he did. At one point in the movie, he almost gets swayed by Scarlett. Oh, okay, okay. But he's like, oh no, no, my heart belongs to Melanie, mm. who's this very quiet, reserved. very reserved, r- like extremely the opposite. Of this woman, and charitable and charitable Her charity, is and like... in fact, too, and I think in here it goes on to say, like, if we went back to the gossiping, she always thinks nice of people. Like, yeah, she would say, "Scarlet, you know, here Scarlet's trying to do everything and, she can to steal the guy that likes her and the, her husband, yeah, because he marries he her, ends right? Up marrying her, yeah, and like she every underhanded, dirty ladder climbing." female scheming trick that ever could be born is she scarlet does. and then she's and melanie like, goes oh she's so kind and she's, she's so the... wonderful do look after scarlet she actually and tells her husband to, to look, look after, after scarlet you yeah. know and and you're just like rolling your eyes like this woman is a monster yeah scarlet is a monster and you just see nothing but good in her mm-hmm. you know yeah. i yeah. always i always whenever i think I need to be a little more of seeing the good. I think of this Melanie character from yeah. Gone with the Wind. Anyway. Well, the other thing, you know, I just want to, I don't know if this is what they mean here, but the other thing I was thinking about, because this happened this on Sunday, and I thought, you know, I'm really glad that I did this. Um, so I, I, I bought these veils. Yes. Off of China. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted some nice veils, you know, and, and I, I, my daughter was born, like, using the veils at the back of the church. I thought, no, she's old enough now. She needs her own veil. Yeah. You know, so I'm on this website and I'm looking at these veils and there's all these nice, pretty, like, gold and beigey veils with all the trim and everything. And so I said to Ava, what color would you like? And she picked out this very nice creamy beige veil with a little bit of shimmer in it. And, uh. You picked out the nicest veil. That's really... Uh, maybe I should get that one too. I thought, no, no. Just get the black one. Like, yeah. just get the black one. Because I did read once somewhere that married women should wear black veils. They should yeah. never wear colored veils. I don't know. I can't remember where I read it, but I did read yeah. that somewhere. So ever since I read that, I always wear a black veil. But I'm going to tell you why that I think that that's true. Yeah. Because we went to church on Sunday and Ava wore this veil. Yeah. And all the little girls, not I'm not not boys or anything, but like all the little girls, like her little cousins, yeah. and even my sister, was like Ava. That veil is so beautiful. Yeah. It and it really like it. It went with her outfit. It it. Yeah. And I, this is not a vanity thing. This is a giving your best to God mm-hmm. thing because I do want to teach my daughter that she should give her best to God. Yeah. Right. But like all the little girls wanted her veil. Yeah. Like, oh, Ava, your veil's so pretty, right? And I thought, you know what? That was good for her, I think. Yeah. Because how would it? How bad would it have been if her mother had the pretty had yeah. the pretty veil, and everybody was giving me attention? Yeah. And even my sister said to me, she said, "Yeah, your veil's not so great next to her." <laughs> And I, but I was glad of that. Yeah, I was glad of that. I thought that is exactly why married women need to wear the black well, they plain. Did sensible veils because they're not supposed to be and it says in here they're not supposed to have mental charms like that's mental but yeah displays to the eye of the curious her physical form decked out in the most seducing attire yes like and so my daughter is going to be of an age soon she's not she's only 14 now but it will be a blink of an eye and she will be at that age where it is her turn not to be vain not to be seducing yeah. But it's her turn to catch a man's eye. Yes. Not mine. Yeah. My my day is done. Right. I'm married. I have a husband. Uh-huh. My day of catching men's eye is over. Yeah. Your grandfather used to always say about, I don't know what, oh, the bishops used to say, tell the the widows to stay in the widow. Attire? Yeah. Well, what? Reeds is what they call Widow them. Reeds? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, said. Yeah, because you, you He can't... said, you cannot outshine the younger the women. women. Yeah. You and know, it's true. You, and it, you had your time. You had your time, right? You know? So, um, and it's very, very important. It's the young, and you see this a lot. Like, I'm going to throw out our very favorite Kim Kardashian, right? Oh. Or are you, I'm going to throw another one, okay? Share. Yeah. The daughters cannot be in competition with, with their the mother. Yeah. And look what happened to Share's daughter. Yeah. 
I mean, you're not, you're probably, you guys, anybody's too young to remember the Sonny and Cher show, but I watched it as a young person. And they used to have, they had this cute little blonde girl. Mm-hmm. And they used to bring her on the show, right? Was their daughter? Was their daughter. Mm. Chastity Bono was her name, right? Now Chastity Bono is no more. She's Chaz, <laughs> right? And she's, like, her mother is basically a sex symbol, yeah. Right. Not promoting that. Just stating just facts. Just stating facts. You know. It's just an example. It's just an example. And. Of what this does to young girls when their mother outshines when, them. When their mother outshines them. Yeah. And she was growing up in the shadow of her mother. Yeah. And the kids cannot grow up in your shadow. Yeah. You had your time. You did with it what you did. Yeah, it's not your time anymore. It's not your time, right? So now you have to, you know, it's not that we're pressing girls to be vain or to be silly or to be, but you cause all All kinds kinds of of problems if you outshine your daughter. Yeah. Right? So so you don't want to put your daughters in a position where they're in competition with with you. you. And that's why this veil is a perfect example. Like, I'm not saying dowdy yourself down. Yeah. You still have to give your best to God. You still have to be presentable when you go to church. But put the black veil on your head that yeah. nobody cares about. Yeah. You know, you had your time. You don't need to wear the pretty veil. Yeah. It, it, that was, it was a perfectly eye-opening experience for me. Yeah, right. You know. Gave her gave her a little bit. Gave of, a her little, a little boost. Not a little anything bit of, drastic. And a little bit of confidence. And a little bit of confidence. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Quote. Um. Idleness is strengthened by an unoccupied life in which the soul entirely given up to the exterior objects finds no time to enter into itself to dwell on serious thoughts or to aspire to heavenly things. Pride is nourished by that seeming regularity of worldly women who shun great excess, not so much on account of their moral deformity as of the inconveniences which result from them and who think that they thus acquire the right to indulge without scruple all the petty passions which the world tolerates or justifies the soul wastes itself in and denigrates in the frivolous and restless mode of existence and when god wishes to impart his grace to the heart he finds it as it were in a fainting condition incapable of a sacrifice or an effort and is often forced to withdraw forever or to wait till some calamity has restored vigor to that invigorated will. Mm-hmm. End quote. That's well, the end of the chapter. Too. And that's the end of so the chapter. So that was a little long. But, but that was a little long. Okay, but two things I want to talk about it, to end up this chapter is, one is it, it threw out the word pride mm-hmm. in there. And it it's, it talked about the pride of women who don't indulge in the success excesses. Mm-hmm. Not the pride of women, not the pride of the Scarlet O'Hara's. Yeah. The the pride that happens when you when you have pride in humility if that if I know that sounds if that's, <laughs> That sense. sounds I mean cuz clearly then if you have pride in humility your humility is not humility, humility. it's pride, yeah. right? So it's not like ah, uh, you know, it's 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 the Pharisee and the and the uh, the, pub, the publican all yeah. over again, right? It's the you know I'm I'm wearing my dress the proper length I'm wearing I my I said hair. Republican I meant public. <laughs> yeah, I just want to clear that up before anybody. I always I have to always I actually I have, have to, to stop, stop because I it's not a Republican, Republican okay it's a Republican. <laughs> Sorry, so, continue on. So anyway, um, but anyway, so we ha- we sometimes have pride in that we don't wear makeup. Yeah. We have pride, you know, like these things are areas of pride for us. That we do doughty ourselves That we down. do doughty ourselves down. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but this is, a, this is a double-sided coin. Yeah. You can have pride in in having all the frivolous nonsense. And you can also have pride in being... You know, you know, like, look at me, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm, you know, I'm doing all the things right and you're, you're not. Yeah. And and you can have, so you have to be very very careful, careful, ladies. You have to find the balance. You have to the find the humi- the humility. Yeah. I mean, the best way that I can say of doing that is not to care about what other people are doing. Right. Right. Just yeah. to see, I'm just doing this for God. Yeah. You know, and to see yourself in relation to God always. Yeah. Right. I'm not doing this so you know my neighbors can say you know oh look at Mandy she does everything right. Yeah. 
you know, look at her. She's dressing pleasing to God. She's right. doing this pleasing to God, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing is the, the pride that can happen from doing everything right. Yes. You know? And I mean, and let's be real, you know, that that is going to be a trick of the devil. Yes. That's how he's going to try to get you because you're doing everything right. And then, and if you are being humble, he doesn't want that. No. So he's going to push those little moments of pride in your face. Yes. To try yeah. to win you back, you mm -hmm. know? That's how he's going to get to you. So you have to fortify yourself and just say, no, I'm doing this for God. I don't care mm -hmm. what everybody thinks of me. And I don't care what people, what I think of other people. You got to push those feelings. Okay. So, I mean, I thought, I thought this very end of this chapter just kind of summed everything up very, very perfectly for women, you know? Curiosity, vanity, pride. flirty, pride, yeah, and pride, yeah, right. You know, so there you have it in a nutshell. You know, all those things that you do not want to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the, of course, the way not to do any of these is is just to, you know, deep into the virtues. Yeah, humility, reserve, mildness, meekness, simplicity, simplicity. You know, all these things, chastity, of course, naturally, you know, mod, you know, all these yeah. things, right? So you, you find out what they are and you just say, I'm practice. This is what I have to practice. This is what I have to do. Oh, on that note, on chastity, uh, I just wanted to say something because I read it this morning and it struck me very interesting and I wanted to share it. I'm reading this book on St. Rita and uh, it said, and she's at the stage where she's in the convent now, um, but it said that. For the religious, for the religious life, the three virtues: poverty, poverty, chastity, and obedience. Yeah. The greatest of those is obedience. Yes. So yes, the poverty and the chastity is great, but to be obedient. Oh yeah. It said to be obedient. So there was this little story, and I thought this was so beautiful. Um, the mother superior, the superior, I don't know what they had a different name for it, but she instructed and commanded saint rita to go and water this dead flower every day yeah she said it's your job you go water that dead plant every day no matter yeah. what and she didn't question she was like okay i'll go and it said in the book saint rita did not question she didn't even say anything back she just obediently did what she was asked and yeah. watered this dead plant every day for like i think it said almost a year yeah and at the end of the year that plant miraculously grew and it was the most beautiful, fragrant, smelling, be like it was the most beautiful flower in the whole garden. Right. God miraculously grew flower that flower. of obedience. And it was the flower of obedience. And then, and, and the mother superior, whatever they called her, she was just like. What happened? Wow. Like, you know, yeah. and it, w it was a beautiful grace from God, miracle from God. A reward for obedience yeah like that's how much god loves obedience you know uh, and I, i'm gonna put this out there too of course if you're married how important obedience is to your husband right even when he tells you to water a dead, dead flower. flower yeah like put that into practice put that you try know? to put that into practice right like to that's say, I'm what just, comes from obedience that's what don't say uh hello ding dong it's dead <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> like, well, because yeah, same reason. Oh, we're gonna. I mean, could you imagine, flower. like, okay. your husband says to you, um, "I want you to water that flower." Okay, you're just an idiot now. Well, and also, you let, know, let's also, you know, also the other thing that the book didn't say this, but when I was reading this, I was thinking about that. Imagine how humiliating that was for her. Yeah, to go and water this dead flower every day, and the other nuns are probably like, "What is she doing?" Or even how humiliating you know, it is like, for you to listen. Say, okay, like if we just put that into perspective to husband versus wife. Yeah, like oh, you know, there's Mandy watering her dead, dead flower flowers. just because her <laughs> husband, <laughs> the idiot, said so. Yeah, you yeah, know, these things are sometimes humiliating. Yeah, but, you know, she knew the the. Do that was due to obedience to this right. mother superior. Yeah, and the, you know? and we know we do know we absolutely know that we know that from the vows that you take in marriage mm -hmm. too that the war is won through obedience. obedience. Yeah, like God 
t- God blesses that a hundred million yeah. times over any prayer, over well, any and sacrifice. That, that and you, you know, could that's make. why I said, you know, the poverty, the chastity, yes, those are great good things. Mm-hmm. But the obedience is hard. Oh, hard. Like, I'm not saying poverty and chastity aren't hard. No. But I would say the obedience. I, as a woman of 60 years old, the obedience, I've lived poverty, you know, uh, and I've lived chastity. You know, yeah. I, I don't find it. I actually don't find those hard at all. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> but obedience, mm-hmm. yeah. Because uh, that's, 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 nut- that's the breaking of the will. Yeah. You know, and... and and to, and I just I just love Saint Rita, and I just love that like to not even question her, mm-hmm. don't even turn around to the mother at Superior and say, "That's dead," you know. <laughs> you know? Like she just, she said nothing. Yeah, In this book it said she said nothing. Right. Yeah. And to do it for a year. Science of the saints, <laughs> ladies. It's the science. And I mean, I guess that's why she's the patron saint of impossible. Right. You know, because look at that. But it's just beautiful. I just wanted to share that and uh, and. But oh, one line, the one line, we didn't get to the last line I wanted to, wanted of that to book. I wanted to refresh that. That was two things. I said calamity till calamity. Oh, yes. Uh, or to wait till some calamity has restored vigor to that in. So what's it saying that. Enervated will. This woman, this enervated. vain. What, are, what are, Who is she? She's, she's curious. Yes, she's she's vain, vain. She's flirty. Flirty. And she's full of pride. This woman here cannot, God cannot touch the, her heart until mm-hmm. calamity happens. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, again, that's our divine providence, ladies. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, and then she's on her knees. Yeah. Right. And then God can come in. So, you know, I mean, we should never be sad about the calamity mm-hmm. ever. Right. Because it's it's what reforms everybody, yeah. our children, us. Our husbands, everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. So anyway, that's just where I just want to make note of that. Yeah. And I think we'll end it there. We're just over an hour a bit. So, um, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in back into this week's episode. We'll try not to have any more breaks. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah. We get, uh, we're, we're hoping to do something a little special. We can't say because. We don't know if it's going to happen. We don't know if it's so going to happen tuned. or not. But we do, hopefully. Yeah, God's will. God's will. And uh, yeah, so until then, till we see you, hear you, hear us next week. Um, everybody have a very blessed week. May our Lord bless you and our, and our lady, lady guide you always. And, and Saint, Saint Teresa, Teresa pray, pray for, for us. us.